everyone. I'm Dr. Nadia Azar with Drum Talk TV at the NAMM Show 2019. Joining me now is Seven Antonopoulos from the band Channel Zero. Hello. Seven, how are you? How are you? I'm good. It's great I'm, to meet you. You too. It's awesome, man. Great. great. Thanks so much for joining me here. No problem. I, I wanted it. to talk to you today about drumming-related injuries, the kind of injuries that develop over time as a result of repetitive motion or overuse. Have you ever experienced anything like that? I did, actually. It was about a year and a half ago. And I always mess up the name of it, but it was called De, De Caravans Tenosynovitis. And it's basically, like for the people out there, it's kind of like the tendon that runs from your thumb up into your forearm. That tendon can become inflamed, create pressure within the actual protective sheath covering. And then, you know, in bad cases like I had, my whole, whole thumb would just lock up, like literally lock up in addition to massive amounts of pain and but the good thing is it's a relatively easy surgery to correct where they where they go in and I don't zoom in but they just go in here make about an inch and a half incision they open up the the covering that is surrounding the tendon which allows the tendon to breathe and then with rehab and you know stretching exercises most people can, can, can get back to full functionality so and that was luckily for me because I was like career ender, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, so how long did it take you to get over that and get back to being able to play? About six weeks, I didn't really. I mean, I would. I was using the, you know, these uh, exercise balls that my, um, I went actually, I lived in Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, I, I was fortunate enough that I got to go to a sports medicine hand specialist that was, who had dealt with all these kinds of, not necessarily drumming related, but wrist issues. Uh, specifically and so uh, I waited about five six weeks and then slowly kind of got back on the on the practice pad and then I was playing again uh, about a week later and so changed a couple things changed one kind of thing in my in the way I set up I actually raised my my front rack tom because it, it my whole career it's been pretty much the same height as my snare and I raised it up because uh, when my doctor was watching videos of me playing I was trying to get some advice like well what do you think, man? He's like, well, you're a maniac, but what about that big thing you hit in the center? And I was like, oh, the tom. He's like, that, maybe it's too low. Maybe you should, because he's not a drummer, but he would look at it, and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe i try that. And it's helped, and it's cool. So did you make any other changes, uh, or do you do anything with your other drumming-related habits, like your practice or your breaks or anything like that, to try to keep yourself healthy? Well, I've always had like a warm-up routine where I would try to stretch and you know what I mean? Like get the shoulders loose or, 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 or stretch my hands and my wrists. But now it's it's like I kind of take it more serious because, you know, my 20-minute routine where I would just kind of do like a bunch of, I mean, it was a routine, but it was kind of loose and I would switch up things from show to show. But now I just, um, I did, what was it? It was like three weeks of physical therapy on this and just really listen to what my physical therapist was saying. And when she's like, you need to do this and this and this, and then I just kind of stuck with it. And a lot of it is, you know, it's boring, but like even just working with the, you know, just the, the, the exercise ball, doesn't have to be very stiff either. And that's both hands. So, and just try to get loose before you play, you know, so. Good. What about um, anything outside of drumming, like in terms of your lifestyle or exercise or things like that? Or is there any things that you do on a regular basis to maintain your, your body to be able to be prepared for the style of play that you use? Well, I guess, first of all, I quit smoking. That helps. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm on the vape train now, but I haven't smoked in almost, a, almost two years. And um, just being active. I mean, even if you're like, I, you know, I, I run with my dog, Dexter. Dexter, he's probably watching me um, run, but even just being outdoors, being active, um, you know, being like in the in nature, I find, you know, even if it's a couple hours a day, kind of keeps me like a little bit not so, you know what I mean? We get bombarded with everything. So uh, he eating healthy, you know, my wife and I have actually got to the point now where, man, we're eating meat maybe once, twice a week, maybe. Um, and it's been kind of, we feel better, and, and I mean, cheese and milk and things like that, of course, but just like meat, you know, eating so much red meat all the time, and heavy, heavy types of, of meat dishes, um, 
that I, I think I feel better. You know what I mean on that. Yeah, and just kind of going more that vegetarian style, you know. And I mean, luckily for us, like when when you're on tour, it wasn't like this ten years ago. But most places, most venues, and most festivals we do, they have multiple veggie options. You know, it's a thing now. Absolutely, we've noticed that even especially around here in California, but all over the place, more and more restaurants are having those vegetarian and even vegan options for people. So it's a lot easier to come by now. I find exactly, exactly, and and you know, eating eating well, trying to sleep. Yeah. Not easy on a tour bus. Yeah, trying not to have too many beers. You know what I mean? But I love beer, so it's kind of a thing. But I, you know, as long as you're running enough, you work it off. Um, but yeah, just you know, and drink you know simple stuff. Drink water. You know, like that kind of stuff, especially on tour. Yeah, absolutely. Especially during a gig. I mean, you guys, drummers work so hard. I've done some studies where I've collected data on drummers and how many calories they burn and what their heart rate is during a live performance, exactly. and it's it's astronomical, really. And and they're working at the level of professional athletes. So yeah, so to be, you really need to be treating yourselves as if you are professional athletes because you are performing at that level. Right, right, right. And it, 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 that's the thing with music though. Sometimes it's like, oh, it's a party thing. But I always, like I've never drank before a show ever. And you know, I'm 45 since I've been professionally playing since I was 21. I've never had a beer before a show. It just, it's not even in my, in the range of possibilities. And I look at, like when I'm going in, I'm looking at it like it's a performance, yes. But it's also like, okay, I need to do this for an hour. It's like if I go to the gym and everybody has a workout routine, you're like, okay, so I need to do this, pace yourself. And I always looked at it in that way. I never looked at it as, as in a party way or whatever, even though I play in rock and roll metal band or whatever. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yep, I do. Well, thank you so much for joining me thank today so for much. sharing. I love the work you're doing. Oh, thank you very much. Glad. I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you, everybody out there, for watching me, Dr. Nadia Azar, with Seven Antonopoulos on Drum Talk TV. Stay tuned. We have more.